it's uh it's interesting that they sing that song um I'm not talking about the blood of Jesus, but in light in light of what I'm talking about, um, I did I didn't really know where I was going to start this, and um, to me, the ultimate ultimate story is just talking about the blood and what He did ultimately on on the cross for us, and um, you know I had here written. Um, my story on forgiveness, because that's something that God kept laying on my heart over and over again was forgiveness. And to me, the ultimate story of forgiveness is what Jesus did. And I don't know, it seems like I cry every time I get up here, I'm sorry, but um, the fact that his blood covered everything, everything that we've done in the past and everything that we're going to do in the future the blood was enough for it. And um, to me, it's just, a, it's just very profound knowing that they were singing that song. Um, but tonight, I'll go ahead and get into the title. The title of tonight's message is The Heart of Forgiveness. And um, forgiveness has always been something that's been easy for me. It's something that's, I don't want to say it's come natural, but I can pretty much forgive and kind of move on through scenarios in life. And um, maybe it's something God's given me, I don't know, but there's been a time where forgiveness was not something that I embraced. It was, um, I had a root of unforgiveness in my heart and in my life that I just couldn't shake, I couldn't let go of, and it just, it ate me up from the inside out. Some of you might have might have not shared this with some people. Some people probably had no clue, you know, come to church, put a smile on your face, act like everything's great. But deep down, it was just tough. It was a struggle each and every day. And I, I found as I let that unforgiveness take root that it led to angerness, led to bitterness, led to hate, um, Resentment. I mean, so many things in my life were all hinging on this one thing of unforgiveness. <laughs> and so, so when Dad asked me to speak, he said, "I want you to speak." I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Like this is, I'm back there most of the time, you know. And uh, but I knew exactly what God laid on my heart, and it was to talk tonight on forgiveness. So. We're going to get right into it. Um, if you will, turn your, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15. And we're going to jump all over the place. We're going to Matthew, Ephesians, Luke. So they've got everything on the screen. So I want you to, to look on there and um, you can follow along. But I, I've written this message twice today. Got two different versions of this because I just felt like I didn't know where God was wanting me to go. And he just kept leading me back to the same scripture. This was the scripture that I had to just grasp and hold on to. And I'm like, God, this just doesn't make sense. But in Matthew chapter 6, it says, if you, verse 14, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. This is the part that struck me so hard when I read this. And in verse 15, it says, But if you refuse to give, forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And in reading that, I'm like, but God, I've asked you to come into my life. You know, I have salvation, and I, I believe in you. I believe in, in who you are. You're the creator of the world. God, you died on the cross. Your blood is applied to everything in my life that I've ever done wrong. But yet he says, if I don't forgive or if refuse to give others, your, your, your father will not forgive your sins. And so it was just so weighty, and I'm like, how in the world do I understand that passage in, in the Bible? And so I kind of started relaying this through my own thought process of just the struggle that I've gone through. And if, you, if you've heard me before, I, most of the time when I speak, it's like God leads me right back into a direction of something that's happened in my life, right? Why would I stand up here and, and preach what God's done in my life, or why would I preach a topic if it's not something God's already done in and through me? 
It's not necessarily something that I've overcame, but maybe it's a battle or something that I'm at war with right now. So just kind of, you can kind of listen just for the next little bit. Um, My hope in telling you this, and some of this I wrote down, my hope in telling you this is that you will learn from my struggle and grow in understanding forgiveness. Unforgiveness affects both the physical and it affects the spiritual. So I looked that up today on multiple sites on Google, and, you know, Google's not the the savior of all, but they all came to this common understanding that unforgiveness physically can lead to stress, it can lead to anxiety, it can lead to depression, it can lead to, it even says, social isolation, and even to physical health whatever what other, other ways of, of health that might lead to. And spiritually, it affects our ability to live out our life in peace and harmony with each other. And let's dive a little deeper into that. It can divide the body of Christ. It truly can because you're holding on to that unforgiveness so strong in your life that you just can't shake it, you can't get rid of it, that it affects the people who are around you. It affects maybe the, the ministry that you can do with the person beside you. It can even affect your friends. It can affect your coworkers. It can affect your spouse. I mean, there's so many different aspects of, to unforgiveness that it can affect. But most importantly, it does affect you physically. And if you've ever gone through any of those things, stress, obviously, anxiety, you know how that affects your body and how much it can lead you down a path that you don't want to go to, both mentally and physically. So in kind of writing this out, I mean, I'm telling you, I had probably 10 points. I'm like, God, how do I condense this down? It's like there's so much content on forgiveness, but God, how do I condense this down? It's like Keith said it, it's the blood. That's all we need. Knowing that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for our sin is all that we need to understand what forgiveness means. He died, I was talking to Travis today, when he died on the cross, I believe he forgave us in that moment without us even asking him to forgive us. Comprehend that. Have you ever had a moment where you feel like someone's wronged you, they've done something to you, they should be the one to ask you for your forgiveness. They should ask you, hey, I'm so sorry I did this, will you please forgive me? And of course, most of us are like, yes, I forgive you. But really and truly, based on what Jesus did, we should forgive them without them even having to ask. Because that's exactly what Christ did for us. He forgave us the moment he, his blood was shed on the cross, and he applied that to everyone. All we have to do is ask. So, point one in the heart of forgiveness and what that should lock in our life. Forgiveness is found in God's love and mercy. You want to turn to Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 31. Um, Many of us have heard this story tons of times, tons of times. It's a great, great uh, parable. Uh, It's the parable of the lost son. Some of us know it as the prodigal son. And I'm going to read this whole whole passage. But to me, it's just a profound uh, story and statement of God's love and God's, God's mercy. It says here in verse 11, to illustrate the point further, and Jesus was just talking about the parable of the lost coin. Jesus told them a story. He says, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, the younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money and wild living. So we have one son who's still on the farm, hanging out with dad. The other son takes his inheritance and just blows it on stuff. He's just out there partying, living it up, whatever. And it says in verse 14, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. And I've never really, I guess this part is is kind of crazy to me. I've never really took much attention to this, but it says, He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. 
If you look back to Leviticus, pigs were unclean. They were considered an unclean meat. And he goes on to say, but no one gave him anything. And when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have enough food to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. So the son says, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. He says, so he returned home to his father while he was a long way off. His father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we had been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for the son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And then it says, so the party began. I believe in that moment that Jesus was telling them this story to explain to them of his love and mercy. You see... The moment that that father saw his son coming towards him, it says that he was filled with love and compassion. He wasn't mad. He wasn't angry. He loved him in that moment. And you know what happens um, when, you, when you have love? It ultimately leads to, to mercy. But I could just picture him running towards him and, and the father embracing him, hugging him, and him telling him he forgives him. And, you know, from there on out, it's, he just, he, he recognizes that the father forgives him. And so kind of applying that, I feel like we're able to p- apply forgiveness towards others when we show mercy and love to others, just like the prodigal, or just like the father did to the son. And because he showed, because God showed his mercy and love, I feel like each and every day we we should clothe ourselves with God's love. And it's only through God's love that in return will produce peace in our life. So point two real quick. Secondly, uh, the heart of forgiveness We must allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. If you truly want to have a heart of forgiveness, you want to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Let's see. It says, I'm sorry, verse 14, my bad. Verse 14. I'm going to start in verse 12. It says, God's purpose is, was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. I wrote this down. It said, people will know us by the Spirit living in us, much like verse 14. I was reading this probably a couple weeks ago and didn't even realize that I was going to use it. Um, But in just reading that, the purpose of God's ultimate plan for us to be united with Christ was ultimately first to the Jews. And we see, if you read the Old Testament, that over and over the Jews kept sinning. Uh, they would have a judge come, come to them, and then from there they would keep sinning over and over, and God would forgive them. He would bring them into a prosperous time, and then they would sin again, and he would, it was over and over. It was a constant cycle. And then we come, in, come to the New Testament, enter the Gentiles, and we see now that the Holy Spirit has now entered into the equation And the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that the inheritance that God promised us from the very beginning, which is communion with him, humanity, communion with God, that he is promising us to that 
promising us that, and that he has purchased us to be his own people. So when I say that, the Spirit is God's, like I was talking about earlier, his ultimate guarantee that what he said is true. And if God puts so much emphasis on the Holy Spirit, why do we not rely on him more? I think most of us do rely on him, but I feel like some of us, it's hard to embrace that. I know for me, uh, being a younger Christian in my early teens, the Holy Spirit was not something that was talked about much for me. It was all about salvation. It was evangelism. And so the Holy Spirit was always a part of my life, and he would commune with me and talk with me, but it was not something that I actively was constantly pursuing, and, and just for various reasons. But I look at it like this. If we're to have a heart of unforgiveness, if we're not embracing the Holy Spirit, how are we going to be led through those, those trials and those difficulties in our life? Um, and I kind of I want to give you this illustration. If, if you imagine, if you've ever done this before, you put a blindfold on your face and you start walking around, right, you can't see anything. If I were to put somebody down here on a blindfold and say, okay, walk outside, get in your car and drive off with your blindfold, one, you would look at me like I'm stupid, but two, it would be pretty much impossible. You might walk and hit a chair and walk out and hit the door because you can't see where you're going. But the way that the Holy Spirit is, is made is for us, when we have that blindfold on and we can't see in front of us, His voice is whispering to us and telling us, okay, you need to go forward. You need to step left. Watch out for that chair in front of you. Watch out for that difficulty or that hurt or that that thing that's going to happen in your life. You might want to go this way. Why don't you keep going forward and to finally get us to the destination that ultimately God wants us to be in? And sometimes we don't listen to him. We're like, no, nah, we can do this ourselves. I know where I'm going. I've, I've done this before. Maybe, <laughs> that's, that's a good statement. Maybe it's, maybe it's a sin that you've already gave to God, but now you've entered back into that sin, and you're like, God, I know how to navigate this. I can, I can keep going. Don't worry. I can beat it, right? But really and truly, God and the Holy Spirit is constantly talking to us and telling us that we need to let go of that struggle, that sin in our life. But we don't. And we just need to keep keep listening to him and keep moving forward as if we are blindfolded and just relying on him. Forgiveness shouldn't be something that's navigated on our own. And it doesn't have to be. I was reading some... some uh, sources on counseling and, and from a worldly perspective, how they tell you to deal with those things. And I'm not saying they're wrong at all. But I think when it comes to the root of unforgiveness, it's only something that as a Christian, you should and only can be navigating through the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying don't talk to someone and, and allow someone to help you work through that. But most of the time, most people are going to say you need to allow God to, to, to help you navigate through this, through this path. And I also think by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, secondly, you'll seek spiritual growth in your life. Many of you who have gone through just, just much like me in unforgiveness, I came out of that season of unforgiveness in my life going, wow, God showed me a lot through that. One, did I not only learn a lot in my own walk as a person just on this earth, but two, I learned a lot about how I need to let go of some things in my life and allow God to work through me in that process. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, if you haven't read Ephesians, I encourage you. Um, or if you've read Ephesians, go back and read it. The first six chapters of Ephesians are the best six chapters you'll ever read. If you've never read Ephesians, there's only six chapters in Ephesians, by the way. Um, but there's some amazing, amazing material and just understanding of, of God's mercy, God's grace, God's love in Ephesians. And I started in Ephesians chapter 1, and I just kept reading and kept reading. I'm like, my God, I just can't stop. And I just kept going. And Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. And this is awesome. If you've ever read the, the, the parable of the fig tree, it says that the fig tree died from the roots, right? Died from the roots. If I'm not correct, we're going to go with it. But that sounds good. He, it died from the roots up. And if you've ever seen a tree that's this died from the roots up, you're going to look at it and go, wow, that's, something, that's pretty bizarre. 
But it goes on to say, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep into love and keep you strong. It is by allowing the Holy Spirit to take root in our life. And I don't mean just take root. Let him be your God. Let him be your God in everything that you do in your entire life. And that's the only way that I believe that you're going to overcome the hurt, the difficulties, the anxiety, the unforgiveness in your life. It's just not going to happen. You can work through it. And you know what? Time, time is obviously a big factor in that. You can work through it all you want to on your own. But the first step should be giving it over to him and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through your life to help you overcome that. And like I was talking about earlier, there was a time of, of, uh, that I was living a life of unforgiveness. I did this for probably a, the better of, of nine months. And um, it was tough. It affected me. It affected the people around me. It affected my wife. There was so much bitterness and anger and hate that I was living with all the time. And I'm sure some of you probably noticed it. I had one lady walk in, or I walked in probably about a month, a month or two ago. And she walked in, she said, wow, you're smiling big. And I'm thinking, yeah, because I just got rid of that junk that I've been holding on to for a long time. She didn't know it, but now she does if she's here. And um, in walking through that, it's like, I'm going to go back to this. God told me over and over and over you need to forgive. And I didn't feel like I was the one that was supposed to be doing the forgiving, to be quite frankly honest with you. I didn't feel like I was supposed to be doing the forgiving. And God kept telling me over and over, forgive, forgive, forgive. And I'm like, no, just leave me alone. I don't want to do that. You could call it pride. You could call it whatever it is. Well, there was one particular day I'm driving down the road, and God is like, forgive. You have got to forgive this person. I'm like, okay, you know what? If I see them again today, I'll forgive them. I'll forgive them. And I'm like, whatever. You know, and I just kept driving. Got to the office. Within an hour, I sat down on my, my, off, my, my desk. And I'm sitting there. I'm talking to Cody, and I look, and the person rides by the office. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I wish I could tell you that I did it in that moment. Um. But, but ultimately, I did, and the second that I did, man, it was just like the chains fell off of me to the point where I was just like, Whew. it changed everything about me. It changed just my joy, my happiness, the way that I look at things. And it was only something that I, that I overcame in listening to the Spirit talk and communicate with, with me, and it's sad that it took me that long to, to overcome that. But once I finally did, I just felt completely different, completely different. Thus, it is important to walk, just kind of recapping, it's important to walk in God's love and mercy and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you on a path of forgiveness. So just kind of recapping a few points. we got a couple of minutes here, about 15 minutes. First, if you want to have a heart of forgiveness, man, you just got to dive into God's love and mercy. Dive deep into it. You've also got to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in your life. So real quick, I want to kind of give you this illustration. I would ask Maggie to come up here, but you're probably sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> no. This is what I feel like a lot of us are doing each and every day. And, and you can label this on anything, right? You can label this any difficulty in our life. But I feel like there's this thing that we have that's just on us, right? It's just taking root. It's, it's controlling every aspect of our life. It's just this, this weight. You can label it unforgiveness. You can label it stress. You can label it whatever. But what I come to find out through this process of unforgiveness, it wasn't only unforgiveness that I was dealing with. And it wasn't only unforgiveness that was affecting the people around me. I found that unforgiveness eventually led to, to anger in my life. So now I got unforgiveness. I'm going to put this on somehow. I got unforgiveness. I got anger. And I'm still trying to make sure everything looks great, right? 
pastors are supposed to make sure everything looks great. We all want everybody to think that life is great for us. We're having a good old time. And the whole time I'm walking around with this unforgiveness and, and anger in my life. And next thing I know, this anger turns into to bitterness because I'm like, why in the heck am I dealing with this? Sorry, I don't think we're supposed to say heck in here. I'm liable to say anything. I have, Lord, forgive me for it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm carrying this unforgiveness that's led to anger, that's led to bitterness in my life, and I'm just carrying this stuff around. I don't know if you've ever put on three jackets, but, man, it is not easy. It's not easy carrying all this stuff around. It's tough. It's hard. And then all of a sudden now, if that's not good enough, now I'm carrying around resentment. Carrying around resentment. And I asked Maggie. She said, I don't know. You should do it. See how it goes. This is me for the last nine months. I'm carrying all this stuff. Y'all don't see it, but I know it's here, and boy, it's difficult. And, it, and really, like I was talking about, next thing I know, I'm taking this out on everybody. This, this unforgiveness is affecting so much. It's affecting so much in my life. And I'm waking up every morning and walking around, and just, it's all on me. And I'm carrying it. Going back to Luke chapter 15, we talk about the story of the prodigal son. And I'm going to read this. I wrote this down earlier. It says, one profound part of that message, this is something that stuck out to me, says that while he was a long way off, the father saw him coming. It's almost like he was, and I've heard my dad say this before, it's almost like he was sitting on his front porch just waiting. He was just sitting there waiting, and the second he saw him, he didn't wait any longer. He's like, there he is. I'm going for it. I'm going after him. And he ran. It says, he, while he was a long way off, the father saw him coming, and it says he was filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced, and kissed him. Who's to say that that father wasn't carrying anything? Who's to say that he didn't have unforgiveness in his life? The Bible doesn't say that. There's a possibility. And you know, I believe that that's exactly what Jesus wants to do for us, wants to do for you. And when I feel like we truly embrace God's love, God's mercy, and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through difficulties, through tough times, through stress, you know what I believe he's going to do? I believe he's going to say, you know what, that... uh." That resentment that you had, nah, you don't need that anymore. It's gone. That bitterness, you don't need bitterness anymore. You don't need it. You can't just get rid of the unforgiveness because, look, it's buried under all this trash. It's buried under all this stuff. You can't just get rid of it. But what you have to do is take it off one at a time and allow God to do it for you and not do it alone. But once he takes off that resentment and that bitterness, he's not done yet, right? The blood's applied to all of it. He forgave all of our sins. So you know what he's going to do? He's going to go on and take the rest of that stuff off. He's going to take off the, the, uh, the anger or the bitterness, whichever one the second one was. He's going to take it off. Guess what now? You're left with unforgiveness. Well, you're three-quarters of the way there. So why not just give it all over to him anyway? If you're struggling with something difficult in your life, much like the prodigal son, came, when he came home to his dad and his dad ran after him and gave with love and compassion and kissed him, what would make you think that Jesus wouldn't want to do so much more for us? So the second, I'm telling you, the second that I did and followed through with what God was telling me to do through the Holy Spirit, it's like that unforgiveness was gone. It was gone. And I'm able to live a life of so much joy and happiness, so much more than I've ever had before. 
Now, that's not to say that there aren't times that come up where I reach for that unforgiveness or, you know, me and my wife have a nice, loud conversation that we shouldn't be having. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting here with this. She, she did something to me. She wronged me and she shouldn't have, you know. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit whispers to me and goes, dude, that was your fault. I'm like, God, Lord, why? Why can't it be her fault this time? It should be, you know. I'm doing everything right. I'm, I got the roof. I'm providing the roof over their head. I'm just meddling now. I need to stop. But you know what he does is he helps me take that off again. And it's a constant battle. It's a constant thing that's going to keep going on. But one thing that happens is when all of that is gone, you know what I believe you'll be able to do? I believe that you'll be able to live a life of joy and peace and happiness because now you know a way to combat that unforgiveness in your life. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, it says, Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So if you're dealing with any difficulty, anything, it doesn't have to be unforgiveness or whatever. I mean, if you're dealing with anything in your life, the only way or the best way that you are going to overcome that difficulty is giving it over to him. Oh, and by the way, this is right here for you to figure that out. So if you're not reading it daily and you're still struggling with all these difficulties in your life, you might want to pick this thing up. That's why I have the real Bible. I ain't, I'm not up here on my phone. I read my phone every morning, verse of the day, but pick this thing up and dive into it and say, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to start. Go to the concordance, the dictionary in the back. Read every verse on forgiveness. That's what I did the last four days. Because I'm like, God, how do I articulate this? But if you truly want to see that struggle be overcome in your life, You've got to dive into his word. You've got to give it to him. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life. And I promise you will see true forgiveness and happiness. And all this stuff right here, it might hang out, but it doesn't mean that you have to let it control you anymore. So tonight we're going to pray and dismiss. Um, I hope that God spoke to you tonight. And if you are dealing with something, I hope that... Uh, you give it over to him and, and know that there is, some, there is an antidote for that. There's someone that you can turn to that's going to be there at all times. What does the Bible say? Um, six, basically sticks closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit's with you everywhere you go. If you are a believer in Christ, if you believe in Jesus and believe that who, who he is and that he died on the cross and that his blood is applied, all you have to do is ask. Say, God, please forgive me for all the wrong and the hate that I've done in my life. But, God, I need your help. And allow him to help you through that difficulty and allow the Holy Spirit from here on out to guide you. And I hope that you'll do that tonight. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. God, thank you so much, Lord, for just this time to come into your house, God. Thank you, Lord, for, God, your the forgiveness, God, that you gave to each and every one of us, God. There's nothing, God, that we can't do, God, that would separate us from you. And, Lord, we are so excited and glad for that, God. We are glad that you died on the cross for us, Lord, that one day we could come, God, and just repent and ask you for forgiveness, God, and knowing that you would forgive us and seal our fate in eternity with you, God. And we can't wait until we ultimately have that relationship with you face-to-face -face one day. God, if there's someone that's here, God, that's someone that's listening online, and they're dealing with some type of struggle or difficulty or unforgiveness or anything in their life, God, whatever it may be, God, I ask right now that, God, they will turn from themselves, God, and give it over to you. God, if there's someone that has never forgave themselves for, for something that's happened in their life, something that they've wronged, some, done something to someone, Lord. I ask God that they will forgive themselves. We all know, God, the first step is we have to forgive us, God, for what we've done. And, God, we, 
We thank you so much for who you are, God, what you mean to us. And, Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.